Happy holiday season, everyone. You know, every family or circle of friends has its own holiday traditions. And when looking back at the past years, I think you can safely say that one of our holiday traditions in Atagma was rendering something spherical. In this case, as you've already seen on Monday, it's a bubble. Again, kind of fixated on that one. And apparently you guys really like spherical objects that have iridescence on them. So much so that after I set up Monday's rendering in Octane, one of the more frequent questions you asked was, how would you pull this off in Mantra or Karma? So here's my little extra Christmas present for you guys, which is a thin film shader implemented in Vex and tested in Mantra. Might be able to run in Karma too, but I haven't tested that. So this thing is based on the first thing that came up when I googled thin film shader OSL, as I just plainly assumed in OSL someone must have written a thin film shader and rejoice, this came up, Chaos Group's homepage, and apparently V-Ray ships with an OSL shader down here, which is the source code, which is based on this article here on gamedev.net, which is a really neat article, really well written, really nicely illustrated, that goes behind the math, what's going on in the shader. So what I did is I straight up copied this code here, headed over into Houdini in the matte context, built a little shading network, which runs a snippet here in which I pasted the code. And then let's open up this code, it's a bit longer. I translated it into Vex which is basically just switching out a few variable declarations and making sure of reading these inputs, the snippet right. And this thing generates a color, which I then wired into the classic shaders specular color down here, which is what's making this effect that you can see in the render window here. A few things that I changed in the code is I added spectral rendering. So instead of just iterating over three colors, red, green, and blue, and just picking out three wavelengths from the visible spectrum to generate R, G, and B colors, turns out to make this thing a bit more true to life, you'll need at least five, in my case, eight to 32 individual spectral bands. That means individual spectral wavelengths that get blended together in the shader. So what the shader does is for each of those individual wavelengths, it calculates the intensity of the light reflected. And then I need a function that allows me to translate the reflection strength of this individual light color into R, G, and B values. And I found this function or these functions, and I settled on one in shader toy here. So Alan here was so kind to implement six different functions that allow you to convert a wavelength in nanometers into RGB colors, which we can display in a computer. So he implemented those different algorithms that you can see here, those six, and the output can be quite drastically different. So I settled on this one here, which is the GPU gems implementation. I settled on this one because it has a rather broad blue portion here, which was important for the look of the bubble. All the other ones, were shifted slightly towards the reddish part of the spectrum. So out of the six ones that I tried, this one was visually the most pleasing. And you can see this function up here. Actually, it's two functions, this bump function, and then this conversion function, which takes in a single wavelength here and converts it to a vector of R, G, and B values. So what I then do down here in the code is I run these eight iterations. For those eight iterations, I pick out eight spectral values ranging between 400 and 700 nanometers, pipe them into the OSL thin film reflectance, which gives me back the intensity of the reflected light of the respective wavelength. And then as this thing already returns the reflection with the Fresnel term included, and I want to pipe the output of this VEX code into my classic shader here, which again applies another Fresnel term to it. Instead of trying to be clever and change the algebra that's happening up here in the thin film reflectance, I just stupidly divided out the Fresnel term down here again. Not the most elegant, definitely not the most clever way of doing this, but that might just be one of the reasons why I'm banned from performing surgery. So yeah, after I corrected for the Fresnel term, I'm just adding the color of this single band of wavelengths here to the RGB value. And after we ran over all the bands we wanted to calculate, I'm just averaging out the color by dividing its value by the number of bands we calculated, in our case, eight. And as I mentioned, this thing then gets piped into the spectral color. I think I had it piped into the diffuse color only for debugging, so you could cut that wire here. What does this take as an input? Well, for one, it takes the film thickness here, ranging between zero and one. And in this case, I just did the same thing as in Monday's tutorial, that is mapping a texture distorted by the UV coordinates, which have gone through FlipSim here onto that sphere. And then we have these three slash five parameters here, which control the behavior of that thin film. One is the minimum film thickness, which I set to hundred nanometers. And that's just a value that I dialed in as it resulted in visually pleasing renderings here. And the maximum thickness of the film here, so that's 900 nanometers, and the IOR of the bubble film. In this case, 
a value of 1.4. Looked really nice. Also, those two parameters here are the outer and the inner medium's IOR. So the outer medium in this case is air, which has an IOR of approximately one, and the inner medium of the bubble is air as well. So that's got an IOR of one as well. However, if you want your bubble filled with some weird gas or weird liquid, or if you want your soap bubble to be floating in another medium, such as water or oil, which physically is not really plausible, but we could render it, you could adjust these values for the outer and inner medium's IOR. All right, let's close the classic shader here. And that's your basic VEX thin film shader. All I did in the scene was add two area lights, one behind the black gobo that we have acting as a background, and one straight above the bubble. Both scaled really big, so they result in those reflections here, which bring out those iridescent colors. As you guessed by now, as this is rendering in Mantra, and my VEX code might not be the most brilliant code on the planet. I mean, it is what it is. It's just cobbled together code that's hastily adapted. I mean, listen, I got a lot of Christmas baking and wrapping up presents to do, yeah? So no judging here. So all this results in quite long render times, but nevertheless, I quite like the result. And it just proves that thin film shading is definitely possible in Mantra. All that I've got left to say is happy holidays. Have a happy new year. 2020 has been quite something. So let's try and keep our fingers crossed and be optimistic about the next year. And thanks so much for sticking with us at Antagma here. We are still thrilled about the support, enthusiasm and general reactions we get from you guys. So I wish all of you a few happy, merry and quiet days. And until next time, it's cheers and goodbye.